Hello again. I hope that viewers have been on their toes lately when it comes to following the news. On the one hand, a lot has been made of the plan to send asylum seekers to Africa and also, of course, the Prime Minister's breaking of the Covid rules has come under scrutiny. Perhaps some people, though, missed the major announcement which Boris Johnson made while flying to India yesterday. Allow me to quote what he said when he was actually on the aeroplane en route to India. Ready? He has, it seems, always been in favour of people coming to this country. Well, that's plain enough. What about, we have a massive shortage in the UK, not least in experts in IT and programmers. We're short to the tune of hundreds of thousands in our economy. That too is quite unambiguous. The Prime Minister is intending to invite hundreds of thousands of Indians to come and live in Britain because he claims there is a massive shortage in this country. This may be news to some of us who think that the one thing which this country does not currently lack is immigrants from the Indian subcontinent. This is all part of a trade deal which Boris Johnson is going to sign when he's in India. The Indian part of the deal is very simple. They want us to accept millions and millions of immigrants. Britain's advantage is uh, less clear. I'll come to that in a moment. But at any rate, that is the quid pro quo for signing the deal. Boris Johnson will agree to practically unlimited immigration to this country from India. We hope to show China that we are joining its enemies in opposing Chinese geopolitical ambitions. That's what we might get out of a trade deal. This is all very well, but the main result for people like us, the ordinary people of Britain, will be hundreds of thousands, probably more like millions, of immigrants from South Asia. The plan is not only, as Boris Johnson openly admits, to invite hundreds of thousands of Indians to come and work here. This is only part of it. The other strand is to make it much easier for Indian students to come and study in Britain. As I'm sure we all know, this is simply immigration by the back door, because few of those students will return to their own country when they have their degrees. In a sense, all the fuss about the fact that the Prime Minister is a liar and lawbreaker has served to obscure the most important aspect of what is going on this week. It is not the fact that Boris Johnson misled Parliament. We all knew that anyway. It's hardly necessary to hold an inquiry into the matter. Nor is it the Ukraine war, which will resolve itself without reference to us. It is the fact that the official policy of the British government is massively to increase immigration to this country, while at the same time pretending to be fighting immigration with the ludicrous Rwanda plan. All the attention relating to immigration has been carefully orchestrated and the Archbishop of Canterbury has been drawn into the matter. Yet the Rwanda affair was always a sideshow a distraction from the main event, if you like. So it was when everybody was running around like headless chickens about Rwanda, Ukraine and the breaking of Covid rules, Boris Johnson was able simply to announce quietly what he was planning for this country. Where do viewers suppose that those hundreds of thousands of IT experts and computer programmers that Johnson talks of are going to live? Where do they think that the hundreds of thousands of Indian students who will also be invited here will be living? Well, almost all of them will be heading for London and South East England, of course. Lord knows what London will be like in a decade. The sewers and drains, together with the public transport system and the rest of the infrastructure, the hospitals, doctors, schools and all the rest of it, is not able to cope as things are already. 
how this will be affected by another couple of hundred thousand more immigrants, which our Prime Minister promised us yesterday, is a very interesting point. The problem with immigration to this country is not limited to the illegal route across the Channel. Indeed, that is a minor matter compared to the authorised millions which this government has arranged. The millions of Chinese from Hong Kong, the ones who will now be arriving from India and so on. There are no plans at all to reduce immigration to Britain and the government are quite open about wishing to increase it instead. Those who voted for Brexit and believed all the stuff about taking back control of our borders have been cruelly deceived. <laughs>